the machine learning product lifecycle. So I started my career as a developer and then I became a data scientist or uh, I have been an ML researcher for some time. And finally, I've also been a product manager. So in this brief video, I want to talk about the ML product lifecycle and also how it differs from the traditional software development lifecycle. So in the traditional programming, we give an input and we write some code and give a program to the computer and what we get is some result. But when we come to machine learning, we give some input and we give the desired result, which is the data which contains some inputs and examples of what we expect to see. And out comes a program or a model. So there is some difference in paradigm here, as you can see. And what this really means is that the kinds of risk involved are different since the ML product lifecycle is not as deterministic as that of a regular product. For instance, if you do not give the right data, uh, which is hard to determine uh, when you start out, uh, you might end up with something completely different than what, would, what you wanted to build. So garbage in and garbage out. You might come up with a model that works well on the data you trained it on, but does not work on the data you want to actually use it for. So uh, also the kind of impact or the kind of metrics that you expected to derive might not, might not come out at the end of your project. So this poses some risks. And the question is, how can we actually uh, work with the ML product lifecycle to minimize these risks? So before going there, let us look at a view of the standard software development lifecycle. As we can see, it is iterative in nature. So we start with some kind of a problem definition uh, and requirements analysis, and then we do some design and uh, we implement the software and then it is tested and then we measure the impact and iterate as necessary. So while this is very iterative in nature, it is also uh, a bit deterministic because once you actually do a thorough design of uh, your engineering architecture and uh, your rollout strategy and define correct metrics, the risk of uh, things going wrong is in some sense lesser than that of a machine learning product lifecycle because uh, when you build an ML model, you don't know how well it will do really. So let's come to a machine learning product development lifecycle. And uh, again, this is a slightly more detailed view that uh, I have come up with, which may not, uh, which is representative of probably a typical product lifecycle, though, you know, there are many variations and each organization has its own. So the, at the center is the customer problem or, and the business problem definition. So problem definition is one of the most important aspects. Uh, it's important to see what is the exact pain point that the customer is facing and also how it impacts the business. And what is important is to define clear success metrics, what we would consider as success in solving the problem uh, if we execute this project. Once we do that, it's important to determine whether we need machine learning in the first place or not because many problems can be solved without machine learning, at least at the first uh, go, and then you can iterate and make it better by actually building uh, more sophisticated models. But once you determine that this, is, this project is going to require uh, machine learning, the right thing to do is to get some data and then start digging around to see what challenges you find with the data and uh, what kind of uh, techniques you can use uh, to solve the problem. It makes sense to look at how others have solved the problem, what kind of data they have used. So it's always useful to first get a sample subset of data and then iterate uh, and think of how to build a full-fledged data pipeline to keep getting this data at scale on an ongoing basis uh, after you know doing some initial experimentation with a smaller data set maybe. So it's also important to think of various approaches you can use to solve the problem. And uh, at this point, it is very useful to come up with the simplest approach, like a straw man model to solve the problem, to see if it's moving your, uh, you know, metrics in the right direction. So this might not be like, you know, uh, the full-fledged model you're going to implement, but uh, it always is helpful to have a baseline to see whether whatever you do is going to move the needle by building a very simple model first then it also makes sense to clearly think about what kind of engineering uh, architecture is required in order to 
execute this project and also what is the effort involved in building the data pipeline. So outcome of this is literally like three things. One is understanding what all models you want to build in, you know, uh, dif at different levels of complexity. So a simple model that you can build and probably a more, so what is the best thing you can do and, you know, everything in between, have a clear view of that. Uh, understand how much time it takes to implement so that uh, one can estimate whether the amount of data scientist and developer effort is worth the investment. The other uh, outcome is the engineering system design because it's very important to think of it right in the beginning, whether it is feasible to have a good engineering system behind uh, design uh, in terms of deployment and whether it, you can build a model that will uh, adhere to the SLAs and so on. And the third is a clear view of how you're going to build a data pipeline and whether it is feasible. Do you have the data for it and so on. Uh, so once uh, you do a feasibility analysis and decide that the investment in terms of time and uh, you know the possible impact is satisfactory, the next step is to go to this purple phase where you would actually go and implement the model. Now at this point, an important thing to note is the metrics that you measure. So there are a lot of ML metrics like the F1 score, AUC, RMSE and so on. And data scientists typically tend to measure these metrics to see whether a model is working well or not. But it is extremely important to measure the right metrics in terms of whether something makes a business impact or not. And this could be slightly different from the ML metrics. So it's very important at this stage to understand what these metrics are. So uh, there could be like different levels of metrics, the ML metrics and a problem level metrics and like, you know, final business metrics, like, you know, possible revenue increase or, you know, possible reduction in shipping time or whatever business constraint you have started out with earlier. Um, so, so the point to note is you want to try to, while it's really hard to sometimes talk about these metrics when you're doing, uh, you know, when you're in this purple box, it's, possible sometimes to actually try to simulate them as closely as you can and try to think of ways in which you can determine how much it will move the needle in terms of the final metrics with whatever you're doing. And uh, while it's not very accurate, it's always helpful to come up with an estimate. Then the online model evaluation is basically pushing it to a small subset of people and seeing how it is actually performing, uh, like doing A-B testing and uh, waiting till it obtains significance and seeing if the impact is in the right direction. So once uh, it is determined that the impact is uh, the kind of impact that you wanted, so you have dis defined a success metric for this problem. So if we are close to the success metric, then you might decide to roll out the problem, uh, roll out the solution. And uh, that could be like to different geographies, different categories and so on. And then you would think of uh, ways for uh, operations, uh, ongoing maintenance and so on in terms of setting up uh, the right ticketing system or whatever other and uh, the right monitoring and alarms and many other challenges that come up when you actually roll it out to a much larger scale. So this is a brief view of the machine learning product development lifecycle. And once again, in order to minimize the risk in terms of getting the kind of impact that you want, some things to keep in mind are the ML product lifecycle is a very iterative process. We want to build models that are as simple as possible to begin with, but no simpler. So should not shy away from actually building more sophisticated models if you think they can make an impact. Measuring the right metrics is extremely important to create real impact. Thank you.